Welcome to DS Trucks. In this video, I want to talk about the recent controversy on one of my favorite channels, and that channel is D Boss Garage, where he talked about full synthetic oil with his engine builder, and his engine builder brought up a lot of things that may or may not be true. And I want to just bring this up for discussion and get what you guys think and your guys' input. I'll link his video so you can check it out and the follow-up video made and some of the issues that I have with it. But I want to start by saying that D Boss Garage is one of my favorite channels. If they weren't, why would I have the merch made in Canada? If you're not filthy, then you're not rich. D Boss Garage, I love you, buddy. But I want to point out some of the issues in that video and what I think about the response along with what I think about the original video. So the original video, a lot of information was presented and caused up a lot, stirred up a lot of controversy, particularly with the idea that full synthetic oil could have caused that damage to that engine. And it was kind of interesting because to me, it looked like the engine had sludge. It had essentially sludge and it looks like they probably ran a cheap oil, like a cheap conventional oil in it. So I'm not sure why full synthetic oil was brought up, but looking at the evidence, looking at the oil filter on the engine, how one sided engine was darker than the other, uh, possibly related to the positive crankcase ventilation. To me, it looks like conventional oil was the culprit and not full synthetic oil. So, you know, it definitely had the feel that they were blaming full synthetic oil but in the follow-up video they were very clear that they weren't diagnosing that particular engine they were just pointing out certain characteristics of full synthetic oil so i can live with that i can live with the explanation that was provided that they weren't blaming these issues on full synthetic oil in this particular engine so that's all cool now i can buy all the stuff a lot of the stuff not all the stuff i can buy a lot of the stuff that was said in the follow-up video but one thing didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me and maybe you guys can help me if you know anything about this particular topic is how the full synthetic oil causes crystallization and i think the idea is that not necessarily full synthetic oil but maybe full synthetic oil that has been used up beyond its life is what is causing the crystallization so i think the idea is when you run these long oil change intervals that are advertised for example 20,000 mile oil changes and one year intervals what can happen is somebody drives very short trips they don't actually get the engine up to operating temperature and it doesn't burn off a lot of contaminants inside of the oil because it never really gets to operating temperature because they're only going a few miles and that because of that, before they ever reach the 20,000 miles, the oil is used up because of short trips. Whereas if you were to get on the highway and drive, say, uh, 120 miles a day, then you're going to reach that 20,000 mile interval a lot quicker. And that full synthetic oil might be beneficial for you. That full synthetic extended drain interval oil might be more more beneficial because you use those that kind of mileage on a daily basis whereas if you only go a few kilometers a day or whatever then going with a high interval full synthetic might not be the right best idea but i'm still kind of confused about one particular topic one particular thing in the idea that the full synthetic oil crystallizes on the in the engine and the camshafts are still cold he mentioned the camshafts being cold and then the oil's hot, so when the hot oil hits the cold camshafts, somehow it crystallizes. And I'm just kind of like trying to wrap my head around it, how that's even related to full synthetic oil, how that's related to, to... I've never really heard of any oil, even conventional oil, doing anything like that. It's kind of like, how can cold camshafts cause oil breakdown? I mean, oil's broken down from heat. And oil's broken down from contamination. But how can cold engine parts damage oil? It doesn't seem like a real 
thing that happens inside the engine and furthermore how can the oil be hot and the camshafts be cold and the hot oil hits it that is to me it seems like the camshafts would be warm too if the engine was running for any period of time but if you know more about that maybe explain to me how if the camshafts are underneath the valve covers and the engine's been running i think if you were to take the engine apart quickly enough the cams would still be hot I mean, they're, I don't know, but that's the idea that was presented. And to me, it still kind of seems like you're pointing to full synthetic and also the mention of cheaper full synthetics, which is another issue, because when you look at cheap full synthetic oil, you're talking about your Amazon basics and your super techs, which are very similar oils to each other, maybe even the same oil, your Walmart full synthetic or your Amazon full synthetic. They're actually good oils i mean they're not designer oils they're not the best they're not your ams oils they're not your pins oil ultra platinum oils but they're not bad oils and cheap synthetics you'd have to find something so cheap that they're just lying on the label and i don't think that's what your cheap synthetics on the market nowadays are doing i don't think that's what your super techs are doing they're just they're just cheap synthetics i don't think there's anything wrong with cheap synthetics and i don't think that cheap synthetics cause this uh crystallization on the camshafts or on the top end of the engine where it's, it's, the engine's not hot and the oil's hot and it's hitting the camshafts i don't even really think that's a real thing i've never heard it i've never heard of that and i've looked into it i did a google search on the exact words crystallization of full synthetic oil and what actually came up is that video and nothing else so before it looks like to me before that video there was really nothing on the topic and the only thing like i said the only thing i can find on the topic is that video so well forums talking about that particular video so it's just i have to kind of just flat out disagree with that and i want to hear in the comment section what you guys think that's probably the main thing that I don't agree with with the whole thing. I really do appreciate the follow-up video. I think they did a good job, but I think the idea that that oil is that oil is crystallizing, even conventional. I think the danger of running a cheap synthetic in a really cold situation is the fact that it might not have enough cold flowing abilities. I'm talking real cold now. You know, most places in America are gonna be fine with your super tech oil. But maybe when you go way up north, it might be beneficial to go to like an AMS oil or something that really flows good when it's cold. But I think the danger of running a conventional oil is if it's really cold, it's going to be a period of time where that engine needs to warm up. And it's going to be a period of time where that oil might not make it to the critical top end components and it may get a little noisy. I've had an engine before that when you ran conventional and it was cold, your your valve train was a little noisy until it warmed up. And if it's cold enough, it would never warm up enough to get the valve train to quiet down. It just sounded like it wasn't getting its lubrication. Then I've switched that engine to full synthetic and it got enough lubrication. The camshaft was perfectly quiet. So I think the danger of really cold temperatures is the oil won't flow good enough and if you do a little search online you see that there's tons of topics and lots of discussion about how when it's really cold your oil might not flow good enough there's no real talk of of uh sludge or crystallization building up inside of a uh engine from being cold so i think with the crystallization thing or whatever I think there might be something related to that with the regards to some of the uh, compounds in the oil crystallizing when it's really cold, but I think they go away when it's warm. But I, honestly, I don't know what I don't know of any negative effects of running a full synthetic oil when it's cold. I only know of negative effects from running a conventional oil, and that is the viscosity is not there because it's too cold and it doesn't flow as well when it's cold. But guys, I want to point out again that even though I disagree with this point, D-Boss Garage is one of my favorite channels. And why else would I have this merch? This stuff, I couldn't have had. I mean, I've already had this. I actually uh, 
don't wear it because one of the stitching, some of the stitching came loose. This is from Teesprings. And I never wore it because I don't want it to get messed up. But like somewhere it like came apart. I don't remember where. One of the one of the stitches came off. And I wore it. It was like literally the first time I wore it. And I never went to order nothing from Teesprings again. But why would I have this merch if I didn't love if I didn't love D Boss Garage? One of my favorite channels. But I have to disagree with this crystallization of oil on camshafts because it's cold. The idea that the camshafts would be cold with the oils not and the oil's warm but the camshafts are cold and then how much colder are the camshafts to where it hits a cold surface and it and it crystallizes so i'm a little bit i'm just gonna disagree with that idea now one thing that'd be cool is to guess to what kind of oil the mechanic is running and also, too, I want to point out that the mechanic's probably a good guy. I'm not nothing against nothing against the mechanic. I know YouTube can get to be a nasty place a little bit sometimes, but again, nothing against the mechanic. But I am curious to what kind of oil he's running in his. I think he said he had a 2018 Dodge. My guess is going to be AMS oil, and the reason I say that is because he said he had a rep. And you have to think, what oil companies have reps? The only oil company that I can think of that would have a rep would be AMS oil. Maybe Arch Oil? I don't know, but I would guess AMS Oil. And the, what he described, a farmer with an engine that had no wear after all those hours. I think he said something like over 10,000 hours. That would probably be an AMS Oil to have no wear after all those hours. So my guess is going to be AMS Oil. Uh, you really can't say Mobile One. What kind of rep would be? You could just get that from the parts store. So if you got a rep, you probably run an AMS Oil. So... I'm going to guess AMS oil. Comment below what you guys think the oil that the mechanic is running. And like I say, nothing against the mechanic, but I think it might come down to his point of view where he's building these engines and he's in the shop and he's not really out in the field working on these engines. Now, I've talked to some mechanics, uh, some other YouTube mechanics, and they kind of uh, confirmed that some of these ideas may be myths and not ideas. But I want to link to another video. I'm going to put a couple links down in the description. And I want to link to a guy that runs Pennzoil Platinum. You've probably seen him as well. It's, it's Ford Tech Make You Loco. He is an advocate for full synthetic oils in your Fords. He runs the uh, Pennzoil Platinum. And he's shown engines that have run full synthetic oil. And they're clean on the inside. Now... Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the mechanic or the engine builder is right. But I just want to open up the topic for discussion. And I want to know what you guys think. But comment below. Tell me what you think. Hope you guys have a great day. Links in the comment section and in the description. Uh, hope to hear from you soon. And over and out. Or we run nothing but the best.